You won't believe it, Sir Hans, but I entered the tourney again. Well, this time I won. Ha! I know! You beat them all black and blue! You're a true warrior, Henry. Really. Even I was amazed at your performance. And thank you, you saved me from Uncle's legendary wrath. Here, I have something for you. I had it made just for you. It's no more than a hero like you deserves. It's very kind of you, sir. Thanks. Well, young sir, what now? Shall we ride boldly forth to adventures new? I never took you for a romantic soul. But, as it happens, a romantic soul is just what I need by my side right now. What, here? Now? Aren't we leaving? Ah, that's just the thing. Here we are, about to ride off into the unknown. Well, who knows what fate has in store for us? What if we should fall as heroes on the battlefield? How could I depart this world with a quiet heart, never having known true love? I'm a little worried about you, sir. Aren't you getting overheated inside that armour? Look, I can't just go off and get my head chopped off somewhere without first winning the heart of the girl I love. So are you going to help me or not? Well, affairs of the heart are what I do best. I'll be glad to help you. So what do you want me to do? You, Hal, shall be my messenger of love. You shall bear her a letter and a gift from a secret admirer. But why me? It's not like you to be bashful, Sir Hans. You can just go and tell her and... Um... Certainly not. Carolina is different to the others. She was educated in a convent and needs to be handled with kid gloves. Romanced. I must court her secretly. It's the latest fashion in France. And who is this Carolina? The fairest maid that ever walked the earth. Carolina. The butcher's daughter. You must have noticed a divine creature in the marketplace. Unless you're more interested in barnyard animals. Carolina, I do know her. She's a pretty girl, all right, but, um, well, a little below your station. Love knows no station but the heart. And you keep your peasant eyes off her. Your task is simple. All you have to do is get hold of a necklace fine enough to grace her lovely neck. I did have one that I inherited from my great-grandmother. Unfortunately, not anymore. What happened to it? I lost it playing dice at the inn. But you'll get it back for me. You're a smart lad. I'm sure you'll figure out a way. And I'll reward you handsomely. Oh, all right then. Is there something else I should know about this necklace? I lost it at dice in the Ledechko Tavern when I was there to see... Well, that's not important. So you bet a rare family heirloom, even though you don't know how to play dice? I do know how to play dice, as long as the other fellow doesn't cheat. No doubt he'll still be sitting there, swindling other folk out their hard-earned groshing. Well, then you ought to have had him clapped in the stocks. But all right, if that's what you want, I'll go to Ledechko and find this swindler of yours. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm at your service, Sir Knight. Are you the one who played dice with Lord Capon? Played and won, lad. A fine noble he may be, but he can no more throw dice than I can read Latin. I can't disagree with you there. But look here, have you still got that piece of jewellery you won from him? No, I don't. Some noble rode through here and we had a game or two. Only them dice kept falling his way. I was lucky to keep my boots. He's got the necklace now. Did you know where this fellow was heading? He was waiting for someone here, but when they didn't show up by midday, he rode on. 
He mentioned something about camping by the bridge over the Sasau River, that one before the charcoal burners camp. You might still catch him there with a bit of luck. There aren't many fords along the river on the way to Sasau. Can you tell me anything else about him? Fine gent he was, well dressed, on horseback. Had quite a lot to say. Seems he saw a bit of the world. And he had some interesting looking dice. You said they fell well for him? Aye, and no wonder. Fine dice they was, made special, all shiny and whatnot. That's all I need to know. I'll be with you. One beer. you after something? I'm afraid my friend here won't tell you much. Your friend? Oh, I'm very sorry. And, um, well, I don't want to be insensitive, but I was hoping to get something from him. My master's necklace, which he won at Dice. Your master? Who would that be? Well, Sir Radzig Cobbler of Scalitz is my liege lord. I'm Henry, but just now I'm helping Sir Hans Capon with a, um, a, a private matter. Those are weighty names in these parts. I'm Sir Anselm of Domkey, in the service of... Well, that's not important. I'd like to give you... That is... I'd like to ask you for your help. I'm listening. Tell me what you know. I will. And I'm sure it will help you find that necklace. The thing is... This is all my fault. I got held up on the way to meet Alphonse... By the time I got here, I found him like this. Ah, God have mercy on his soul. Amen, lad. I was heartbroken and enraged by turns, tearing my hair and cursing. Alphonse was my good friend, and it pains me to know he was only here on account of me. I brought him into a certain business matter to negotiate with some people, and he agreed. And this is how it ended up. When I finally pulled myself together, I took a look around and found some tracks. I followed them to the camp of those very brigands that Alphonse was supposed to negotiate with. Nah, you can't trust anyone these days. So how can I help? You can pass yourself off as Alphonse. Get into the bandit's camp and find that fucking murderer. And when you do, you'll find what you're looking for. Well, that doesn't make any sense. If one of them killed Alphonse, he'll know I'm not him. No, no. They never saw him before. So whoever killed him surely took him for some passing merchant. Are you quite sure they don't know him? Aye. He moved in altogether different circles. Among decent people. That's the very reason I asked him for help. So I reckon the best thing is for you to introduce yourself as Alphonse, have a snoop around, and come back to me when you find out anything.
Now, wouldn't it be better if you did that yourself? After all, I know nothing about this Alphonse. They'd see through me. I'd do it if I could, lad. Only they know me, and I'm not on the best of terms with them. They'd most likely kill me on sight. <sighs> then the two of us would be dead and those bastards would get away with it. Well, I hope I can avoid the same fate. Is there anything else I should watch out for while passing myself off as Alphonse? The main thing is to look and sound like a noble, not a peasant, a commoner. So dress the part. No rags or rusty iron. And how am I supposed to recognize the killer? Ask around. I don't reckon anyone will admit to stabbing him in his sleep, but... You might pick up some clue. You could have a look around for that necklace. Now that I think of it, they stole other valuables from him too. Silver is silver, though. I won't recognise anything. Didn't he have something unique? A signet ring or a chain or... No, not that I can... Oh, yes, he did. Dice. He had a set of dice made specially in Prague. It was his pride and joy. They were red and gold, bright and shiny. Not the kind of thing you'd overlook. What can you tell me about Alphonse? So they don't catch me out if they start asking questions? Indeed. A few details should suffice. He was from Slani, but lived in Prague the last few years. He advised people very well too. He helped them to deal with problems of all kinds. Yeah, he sounds like a man of the world, but I've never even been to Prague. I'm not sure I can fool them. You can always change the subject. He was an ardent dice player, God forgive him. And he spent some time in Moravia on the service of Prokop of Luxembourg. But that was ages ago. What was the purpose of Sir Alphonse's negotiations? I'll need to know that. Look, Henry... You'd best avoid that subject, if at all possible. Just find the murderer for me, get your necklace, and I'll take care of the rest. It'll be a bit hard to avoid that, since it was supposed to be the entire purpose of his visit. True. Well, Alphonse was supposed to talk Earhart into moving his robbing raids towards Benishoff, especially holding up merchants' wagons heading for Prague. In return, he was to offer a reward of up to 12,000 groschen and safe haven in pilgrims. I see. So you work for someone in Pilgrims? No, neither Pilgrims nor Benishoff. Nor Vlasheen, for that matter. It's a bit complicated. Damn politics. My word. The whole thing sounds like quite a twisted affair. So are you going to help me? I'll help you. I'll have to go there to look for the necklace anyway. And this seems as good a way as any. Thanks a thousandfold. And for the love of God, don't get caught. I'd never forgive myself if another man lost his life on my account. If it starts to look risky, take to your heels. I'll bear that in mind. Could it be someone was trying to get rid of something here? Looks like he died without a struggle. Killed in his sleep. They took everything he had. Money, jewellery. Jokes.
Would I be right in assuming this is the encampment of Sir Earhart, uh, Baron Bilovets? And you'd be who then? I am Sir Alphonse, and I'm here to parley with Sir Earhart of Bilovets. No offence, sir, but you don't look much like no lord to me. I am travelling in disguise, that is, uh, incognito. No one must know where I am bound, or from whence. Where? All the way from Prague, eh? Who's there? I'm not at all, Goodman. Uh, from Slammy. Hey. Ah, well, that's quite a haul. How was your journey? As well as might be expected in these perilous times. Oh, aye. The roads ain't safe at all these days. There's all sorts of rabble waiting to rob and weary folk and even kill them. Indeed, indeed, I concur. One must be wary, well, cautious, even, when travelling. Right, then. But you'll have to wait a while. Sir Earhart is busy at the moment. No matter. I shall just, uh... But it's easy to pass the time here. There's always a dice game going on with nice things being wagered. I had my eye on a fine pair of gauntlets and some old piece of jewellery. Uh, jewellery, you say? That's right. Just go and see old Blaha. The fella sitting at that table there. He can read, write, and do sums as good as any scribe, and other things too. He keeps things in shape here a bit. Thank you. I may well do that. I was told I could have a game or two here until Sir Earhart has time to see me. Aye, he's got his hands full at the moment. You must be Sir Alphonse, eh? I'm Blaha, Sir Earhart's servant. I take care of things here a bit. Including dice? It has come to my attention that there are interesting things being wagered. True enough, we've got a fine pair of plate gauntlets, two necklaces, one of them's a lovely piece, a good sharp sword and some other things, I don't remember what. The custom here is if you want to play, you've got to wager something to join. I regret I have no valuables on my person. I thought it wiser to travel light, on account of thieves. Well, under the circumstances, it wouldn't be polite to deprive you of a bit of entertainment while waiting. You want to play right away, or...? Why wait? I'll play now. You'll have to wait a while. Have you got any special rules? Nothing out of the ordinary. Just remember, we're not some bunch of dirty bandits. This is the camp of a noble knight, so no unnecessary brawls, stabbings or such like tomfoolery. Not that I need to explain that to you, sir. Quite. Nothing else? Well, that also means a man might take offence at something and challenge you to a duel. Always swords, and until first blood. Ah, very well. I shall try not to give offence. Can you tell me something about yourself? What can I tell you? I can read and write a bit, and I help Sir Earhart out when he needs it. Although, I have to say, since the Baron took to robbing, there's not much work for me anymore. And what did he do before that? Fucking what every landed noble does. He still had some estates and income from them, only he lost it all some years ago on account of debts. 
So he had to find some other livelihood. How did he find this place? That was my doing. I heard from a scribe about some ownership feud that ended up badly for both sides. Since then, it's been left neglected. Oh, that's a shame. No doubt it was once a fine place. Aye, the vagaries of fortune, eh? Times are harsh and what have you. It's always been that way and always will. I wonder how many burned out, abandoned ruins will be left when Sigismund withdraws. How many folk will have no homes to return to? And how many won't be returning ever? But that's our lot in this Vale of Tears. There'll be no peace and quiet till the next life. Amen to that. I want to play dice. Who will be my opponent? You'll have to wait a while. A bloody flood. I want to play dice. Who will be my opponent? All right, good. You'll play against Noggin now. He's not the brightest, and he ain't a good loser. A fucking cheat, sir. I challenge you to a duel. I won't take any accusations from you. Yeah. I accept. I'm gonna get. I want to play dice. 
Who will be my opponent? They fell your way last time, and no mistake. You'll play Berta. He's a man, but they call him that for some reason. Damned if I know why. I want to play dice. Who will be my opponent? They fell your way last time, and no mistake. You'll play against Maladota. He's a bit... Well... You'll see for yourself. You cheated. I'll kill you. Ah, a bit of fun for a change. The last fella I killed didn't even see me coming. Enjoy this. Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.
My family, my life. Good gracious, it's Henry, champion of the Rat Eye Tawny. I've got that necklace. Excellent news! I'm not going to ask you how you did it. Here's a reward for you. Now you can carry on with your next task. I want you to sneak the jewellery into Carolina's trunk along with this letter. Can't I just hand them to her? You cannot! Under no circumstances must she find out who sent them. Otherwise the whole secret admirer ploy is fucked. Oh, and by the way, Henry, watch out for the butcher. 
He keeps a very close eye on his daughter, and if he catches you sniffing around, well, may all the saints preserve you. Once you've delivered the things, wait a day, and then come back and see me. See you later. something Yeah. Yeah. Greetings. What do you need? I delivered the things as you asked. I already know! My spies told me everything. She was wearing the necklace this morning as I asked in the letter. So you'll go to the rendezvous with her? Certainly not! I'm not going to pounce on her like a bull in rutting season. Her feelings must be allowed to mature gradually. Meanwhile, you'll get a potion for me. I thought you didn't believe in witches' brews. This is no witch's brew. It's an absolutely tried and tested elixir called Musk of Infinite Allure. There's a fellow in Sassau who sells it and he guarantees its success. Musk of infinite allure? <laughs> Sounds irresistible. All right, I'll try and get it for you. I'm sure I can rely on you. Here's some coin for your costs. See you later. Problems with stomach ulcers? Buy my... Well, well, who have we here? Ah, the prodigal son returns. I knew you'd come back to me one day. Mm, let me guess, you saw it in a dream? I knew you were going to say that. But I had a divine revelation. That next time I won't be around to pull you out of the shit. Oh, well, I, I am sorry. Uh, but these things are sent to try our fortitude in the face of adversity. I'd like to try your fortitude. I've heard you know of some irresistibility potion or whatever it is. Ah, oh, naturally. Musk of infinite allure. An age-old recipe, maybe even older. Tested by Moses himself. Moses? Or how do you think he managed to get his people to follow him through the desert for 40 years? It's extremely potent. Yeah, so it would seem. How much do you want for it? Who do you take me for? The wisdom of the ancients isn't something that's bought and sold in the marketplace. Did Jesus charge for his miracles? But since you ask, how about this much? What? That much? You're a crook. As King Solomon said, uh, honesty is for those who can afford it. If you'd like, I can mix the elixir for you in exchange for a small favor. Oh, not again. 
Now, is that any tone to use with your master? For shame. Apologies, master. I was carried away by my thirst for knowledge. I understand your impatience, but the way to wisdom is narrow and arduous. And leads out the window. So what is it you want from me now? Ah, oh, my dear apprentice, everything's gone to the devil. I'm living from hand to mouth, sleeping on straw. And the local peasants won't buy from me. They say they don't trust me, as if I were some kind of charlatan. Can you believe it? Does this look to you like the face of a swindler? I'm an honest trader in sacred goods, whose only concern is the welfare of troubled souls. A regular good Samaritan. And any time now the slanderous gossip will spread here from Sasau. I should leave before things get worse. But I can't go anywhere until I've made a bit of coin. So what's needed is to give the locals a bit of encouragement to open their hearts and purses. I'm not going to go around beating people for you. What do you take me for? I, I wouldn't hurt a fly. Violence is for the dull-witted. We must gently demonstrate to them the necessity of buying my remedies. For example, to ward off a revenant. Revenant? What revenant? Well, the dead return from the grave, a corpse that the soul is unable to depart from, which wanders among the living, filled with rage at its wretched fate. Yeah, I saw something like that once. But it was just some drunk going home from the tavern after losing all his money at dice. Don't make light of such things. Now tell me, do you know how to deal with a revenant? Chop its head off and sprinkle holy water on it? Mm, that is the traditional way of dealing with such supernatural manifestations. You are my trained apprentice, but the ignorant villager is entirely at a loss how to deal with such dark forces. It is our sacred duty to prepare them for such threats. And how do you propose to do that? Well, they're all doubting Thomases. They need proof. We'll need a grave, an empty grave that we can use. There's one along the way to Sasau... But it's got one minor shortcoming. What's that? Well, it's not uh, entirely empty. Not entirely? What does that mean? You have to dig it up first. I'll have nothing to do with it. Give the job to someone with no human decency. But you're my one and only apprentice. I'll have to get something to eat. God be with you. About that recipe? Yes, you want to buy it? Yes, I need it right away. I understand. I'm sure you'll be more than satisfied with it. But I won't be drinking it, fortunately.
Greetings. What do you need? I got you that potion from the charlatan. What charlatan? He's a man of learning who even cured the Pope of impotence. But thanks, Henry. I really appreciate your help. Once I drink this potion, every woman will faint at my feet. But I'm only interested in one. The fairest creature on God's green earth. Yeah, the butcher's daughter, I know. And then what? A rendezvous. She and I under the cloak of night, and you shall be my herald of exalted words. You will hide and prompt me from a book of poetry. I'll do what? Here's a book of poems. I'll need a little time to get ready. Meanwhile, you can learn some poems off by heart. You'll prompt me. Learn poetry? Me? That sounds... well, not exactly... Stop wasting time and get to it. Come back to me in a couple of hours. I have to get dressed up and groomed, and it'll take a while before the potion takes effect. Take care. Yeah. To me? Learn how to ride a horse, idiot! Are you ready, Sir Hans? Henry? Something... Something's gone wrong. Open up. I'm not going to talk to the door. Potion tasted rather odd, and now I have a feeling my face is broken out. How do I look? You're imagining it, sir. You look as irresistible as ever, if not more. But I feel as if I just fell face first into a nettle patch. Well, you're just a little flushed from the excitement. It'll pass. If you're sure. So, what do you think? Can we go to the rendezvous? Why wait? Carolina won't be able to resist you. All right then. Lead on, heart. And you, Henry, follow me. Tell me, Henry, how many girls have you had in your life? If you've had any at all, that is. Compare with you. Ha! <laughs> Very true. One day, plays will be written about my amorous adventures. Comedies or tragedies? That might depend on how things go tonight.
There's another very pretty girl living in this house here, but she's already got a suitor. Since when has that ever bothered you? Since the time her fellow threw me headfirst into a dung heap and kicked my ass for good measure. It seems your future subjects don't hesitate to take a stick to you when it comes to minding the women folk. I doubt he would have done it if he recognised me. I was, um, incognito. We're almost there. You'll hide behind a gravestone or in the bushes and don't budge from there. Otherwise you might scare her off. Hide, Henry. Time to get started. How do you know it's her who will come out and not someone else? She got the letter and necklace, didn't she? She knows that I'm... That is, her secret admirer is coming. And what am I supposed to do? What do you think? Don't prompt me from that book of poetry. I don't want to turn up late to see the love of my life. Who's there? I can't see you. Your most ardent admirer, fair maid. Aha! Uh -huh. And do you have a name? What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would... would still be a... flower, wouldn't it? Start! How? What are you saying? I can't hear you! To love and be forlorn is like night without a dawn. To be close with naught to say, like winter frost in May. To love and be forlorn is like night without a dawn. To be close is not the same, like intercourse in May. No! To have lips and yet kiss not is like leaving grain to rot. To love without consummating is like unsown fields in the spring. To have lips and yet kiss not is like a leaking chamber pot. To love without constant mating is like nuns all feel in the spring. Psst. What on earth are you saying? What's that hissing? It's a, a feral goose here in the bushes. I shall love you then, my dear, as long as you lie with me here. If you'll not give your all to me, no longer shall I bide with thee. I shall let you drink my beer, as long as you, uh, buy one for me. If you'll not give your ale to me, no longer shall I buy for thee. Jesus, Henry, what kind of yokel nonsense are you babbling? Me? You're the one who's babbling? You're an odd one. I've never heard such peculiar poetry in my life. Where on earth did you come up with it? It's, it's the latest fashion in France. You've done it off harm. Better shut up and leave it to me. How did you like it, dearest? Er, uh, well, it was, um... Father is coming! Hide! What was that talking? If it's some dandy again, I'll gut him with my filleting knife. I didn't hear anyone. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> but I have a bad feeling about this, Hans. I think we should. Are you still there? Still here, my love. 
How could I have apart from you? Father's coming. He'll kill you. He will not. Because it'll never cross his mind where I'll be. Henry, it's time for me to claim my prize. Whatever happens, cover my back. There you are, you seducer. Now you'll see how a butcher protects his daughter's honor. Buy me time. You got some explaining to do, you bastard. What are you after, you bastard, sneaking around an honest citizen's house in the dark? I went to mourn over the grave of my great-grandmother. Oh, yeah. Then what are you doing right beneath my window, eh? Well, the question is, why are you trampling on great-granny's grave, eh? Enough of your horse shit. One more word, and I'll have you. Ah! What are you doing here? Oh, my darling. Get out! Get out or I'll call Papa! My sweet! How can you be so cruel? Hey! What was that? What was what? That noise! I'm sure I heard a strange noise. We're here in the cemetery. Maybe restless spirits, what do you reckon? I swear it came from the window of my own house. Well, what's that got to do with me? Someone's been creeping around after my daughter. I come out and I find you here. Quite a coincidence, eh? So, out with the truth. You're quite mistaken. I've never laid eyes on your daughter, and if she looks anything like you, I'd rather keep it that way. Why, you fucking... What do you think you're doing? Climbing in here, uninvited? Ma chérie, I came to court you. Then go and court me from the courtyard. Don't try to make a fool of me. I heard it clearly. What was that? Are you alright? It seems to me you're hearing things other folk can't hear. That's not good. You're saying I'm hearing voices in my head? Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sent you for a scene of Palotsk heard voices too, and she found in a monastery and churches and things. I heard voices too? Well, could have been voices. I wouldn't swear to it though. Look fellas, I was standing right here and I didn't hear a thing. Do you take me for a madman? Whatever you are, I want to know what you're doing under my daughter's window and who was talking to her. I heard it clear as day. Good neighbour, it can't be denied that old age dulls a man's ears. I'm here alone, praying for the souls of the good people resting in the cemetery. I've nothing to do with your daughter. Hmm, that voice sounded different to yours though. But where did he get to? You must have seen him. Unless... Unless you're covering for him. What? You don't love me? No, and I told you, get out! Well, how about a kiss at least? Out, out, out! Oh, Christ almighty. It's haunted here. I knew I should never have come near this cemetery at night. The only one doing any haunting here is you. And I've done wasting time with you. I'll beat you to a pulp. And then that other bastard. You'll get the hiding of your life. You're dead. I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> God be with you, lad. What can I do for you? How did it go with Carolina, Sands? 
It was a disaster, Henry. A disaster. How come? Didn't your recitation do the trick? What kind of nonsense were you feeding me? Carolina thought I was a thief breaking in to rob the place. I tried to explain, but she wouldn't listen. She told me to get out or she'd call her father. Oh, you're lucky I managed to keep him busy. Only now he thinks I'm the village idiot. Well, thanks for that, at least. Anyway, Carolina slammed the door in my face, so I suppose I'll have to look elsewhere for the love of my life. Oh, back to writing love letters. To hell with love letters. Imagine. That silly goose couldn't even read. Ah, shame. She missed out on something very rare. Indeed. <laughs> Here's the letter, Henry. Read it. At least you're capable of appreciating my literary talent. Read and learn from a poet. God be with you. How about it, Henry? Can we go? Are you ready for this? Of course. At last I'll get to see more of the country and have a bit of an outing. Quite. Let's get to it then. I finally have the feeling we're doing something worthwhile. We're helping to save the king. Instead of saving his drunken majesty, I'd rather find that horse who murdered my parents, get the sword back from him, and skewer him with it. Cheer up, Henry. I have a feeling you'll get your chance one day, and it won't be long in coming. Forward, men! Audentes fortuna, you are!